Okay, today we're going to talk about science and science in general, as you've learned in every single science course that you've ever taken, is unique because to do science, you have to follow the scientific method. So that's what we're going to talk about today, the scientific method. Scientific method. And the key word here is method. So there's a process that you go through in order to do science. We like to think about we as scientists like to think about science as a verb. It's something that's actively occurring as we speak. So when we do science, what we're following is a specified method or a specified procedure, and that leads us to specific conclusions, and then we share these conclusions with the world. So we're following the scientific method, and it starts by just making simple observations. So we make observations of the natural world, we go out and we look around and we wonder why. So we ask questions. So observations always lead to asking questions. So I may go outside and it's springtime now, so I may go outside and observe that the grass is green. So there's my observation. It's not quite green, but uh, at least as of today, which is almost the end of March, um, it doesn't have snow on it, uh, so that's a huge improvement. Okay, so we start off with our observations, and our observation is that the grass is green. From that, we have to come up with a hypothesis. And a hypothesis is something that explains your observation. So it comes up with some sort of idea of why something happens. Um, oftentimes a hypothesis is regarded as an educated guess, which is an okay way to think about it. Um, it's really just a, a, a statement of why something happens. So we're going out and we're looking at the natural world. We notice things and then we can uh, explain why they happen. Or at least we have some sort of idea of why they happen and that will be our hypothesis. So maybe I think that the grass is green because, well let's see, uh, if I think about something else that I know is green, then the first thing that comes to mind is of course aliens, right? Of course. So our aliens are also green, so I bet the aliens came down and rolled around on the grass making it green. So there's my hypothesis, is that it looks like rotted, sorry, that's rolled in the grass. So the aliens rolled in the grass and they made it green. Now this is not a scientific hypothesis, so this is no good. And the reason for that is scientific hypotheses have to be testable. So this is not scientific. I cannot test whether or not aliens rolled in the grass. That is not something that is within our current capabilities of testing. So it is not scientific, not a scientific hypothesis. So the key to a good hypothesis, the key to a scientific hypothesis, is that it has to be testable. So they must be testable. So scientific hypotheses, which is the plural of hypothesis, Scientific hypotheses must be testable. So I cannot say that aliens rolled in the grass. So that is no good for my scientific hypothesis. So I have to come up with some other hypothesis. So maybe I could say my new hypothesis is there's something inside the grass that gives it its green color.
And of course you can be sort of as specific or as general as you want to for purposes of explanation. And of course this is kind of a silly one. Um, I, I could just say, well, there's something. There's something that must be inside the grass inherently that makes it green. So what do I do next? I have a statement of what I think is true. I think that there's something inside that makes the grass green. So I can test it now. So I need to do some experimentation. So how can I show that there's something inside the grass that makes it green? Well, maybe I need to stick it in a blender and look at it under a microscope or whatever it is. I'm gonna go through some sort of experimentation process and test it. And there's a couple different ways that we can go from here. So from here, in the experimentation phase, I can either show that yes, my hypothesis is true or we disprove our hypothesis, or we show that it isn't true. So it just didn't work, it wasn't the right idea. So there's two different routes that we can go once we do some experimentation. If we can't disprove the hypothesis, and see this is the key to science here, it's all about disproving things. So if we can't disprove it, then we can tentatively say that the hypothesis is good, and then we will publish it. And the purpose of publishing any sort of scientific um, writings or any sort of scientific ideas is so that other people can test your hypotheses, so that other people can do the experiments and show that they get the same results over and over and over again. That's the method, that's the scientific method. So we publish, more groups test, other people test, Okay, so now we have other people that are looking at this hypothesis, and then once people have tested it over and over and over, and again, more groups are testing, and then more groups are publishing, and then more groups are testing, and once we have this cycle going of this long term, looking at these hypotheses, not able to disprove them, then this hypothesis becomes what is called a scientific theory. So the difference between a theory and a hypothesis is a theory is something that has been thoroughly tested. It has gone through the method. If it hasn't gone through the method, then it is not a scientific theory, okay? Now, if we're disproving the hypothesis, that's sort of the other way. So we experiment, we do the process of science, whatever that is, we pulverize our grass, we look at it and find our chlorophyll molecules. Or maybe we pulverize our grass and we look and there's nothing in there that's obviously green. That wouldn't be the case. But if we disproved our hypothesis in some way, shape, or form, then we'd have to revisit it. We'd have to come up with a new idea. Now we have more information. This is where the educated guess part comes in. We have new information now. And that comes from our experiments. And so now I can come up with a new hypothesis. And now that new hypothesis can come into experimentation again. So if we bring this up and around here, and then we can look at that new hypothesis and see how it fares. And then we either prove or disprove it. And if we disprove it, then we come up with a new one and we go through the process again. If we prove it, then we can start publishing. Other people can look at it. Then we go through this process and then we end up with a scientific theory, okay? So it sounds kind of rigorous, and in some ways it is, and that's why science is a process. That's why we're sciencing as we speak. It's a method. And scientific theories then can lead to scientific laws. And that's kind of the, uh, the most well-established of our ideas. And scientific law is really all about um, succinct statements of truth, if you want to think about it that way. Although science really isn't in the business of truth, especially not truth with a capital T like philosophers are. But scientific law is uh, a statement of the way that nature works. And it's usually pretty brief and it usually combines together a lot of scientific theories. So a scientific law is the culmination of a number of different works. 
it's much larger than theories. It's multiple theories that are put together. So scientific law could be something like E equals MC squared, for instance. E equals MC squared. So energy is equal to mass times the speed of light squared. Okay, so that says that energy and mass are related to each other. So this is a statement of the way that we understand nature to work. Okay, and again, this isn't truth necessarily. This is just a relationship that we've found that tends to work. Okay, and it tends to work over and over again. And as many people as have tested it will all attest to that it works over and over and over again. Okay, so that's the difference between laws and theories and hypotheses. And that kind of rounds out what we're talking about with the scientific method. So what we're talking about in chemistry here then, because we're in chemistry 105, chemistry is a science. And it's often called the central science because if you know a little bit about chemistry, then you know a little bit about biology, then you know a little bit about physics, then you know a little bit about geology. Okay, so chemistry is at the heart of many of the different sciences. So it's easy for me to say that because I'm a chemist, but um, I think it's fairly widely known that uh, chemistry is really at the center of all of it. <laughs> Which again, a little bit of ego there. So chemistry, if we're putting a definition on it, is the study of the structure and behavior of matter. Study of the structure and behavior of matter. And the word matter is really all encompassing. The word matter comes from the same word root as material. So everything, if you've heard about the material world, everything that is made up of materials is made up of matter. So matter is any amount of stuff that you're made up of. So matter is kind of equal to, I affectionately just call it stuff. That is definitely not the scientific term for it, but, um, but there you go. So if uh, chemistry is the study and of the structure and behavior of stuff, then we probably need a little more of a better definition. So matter is anything that has mass. And we think about mass here in the U.S. as weight. So mass and weight here on Earth anyway are interchangeable, and we'll talk about um, why that works a little bit later on in a different video. And it also has volume. So volume is the amount of space that something takes up. So anything that has mass and has a volume, so it has any amount of weight and takes up any amount of space is matter. And chemistry is the study of the structure and behavior of all of that stuff. So that could be from the teeny tiniest of atoms and even smaller than that in subatomic particles all the way up to universes and the cosmos, right? So chemistry has a really broad range and a broad spectrum of things that it encompasses. And so this is kind of an introduction to it as a field. And we'll talk a little bit more about how we do measurements and how we go about doing the business of chemistry in uh, future videos. So if you have any questions on this, don't hesitate to ask and I'll talk to you again soon.